Reality or illusion? How does your brain know? In recent experiments, researchers have uncovered a fascinating aspect of how our brains operate. They differentiate between what we perceive with our senses and what we conjure up in our minds, using what scientists call a reality threshold. These aren't just existential musings akin to Queen's iconic lyrics in Bohemian Rhapsody. They're fundamental questions that our brains must grapple with constantly as they process the flood of visual information from our surroundings, alongside the mental images we generate internally. Despite the strikingly similar neural patterns activated by both seeing and imagining, our subjective experiences of these phenomena remain distinct. Consider this. As Thomas Nazalaris from the University of Minnesota puts it, you could glance out your window and effortlessly conjure up the image of a unicorn trotting down the street. Yet, while the street outside appears tangible and real, the mythical creature does not. This separation between perceived reality and imagined constructs seems instinctual, almost irrespective of our rational understanding that unicorns exist only in folklore. So, why doesn't our perception blur into a constant state of hallucination? Nadine Dijkstra, a postdoctoral fellow at University College London, explored this question in a recent study published in Nature Communications. Her team uncovered a compelling insight. The brain essentially cross-references incoming visual signals against this reality threshold. If the signal meets the threshold, the brain interprets it as real. If not, it's categorized as imagined. This mechanism generally serves us well, as imagined signals typically fall short of the threshold's mark. However, if an imagined signal is potent enough to breach this threshold, the brain treats it as genuine sensory input. Yet, while our brains excel at this reality assessment, Lars Muckley, a professor at the University of Glasgow specializing in visual and cognitive neurosciences, notes that the process isn't foolproof. These findings prompt further inquiry into whether variations or glitches in this system could contribute to phenomena like hallucinations, intrusive thoughts, or even the enigmatic realm of dreaming. For Thomas Nazalaris, these discoveries represent a significant milestone. By grounding age-old philosophical debates in empirical research and predictive models, scientists are shedding new light on the intricacies of the human mind. When perception meets imagination. Amid the upheaval of the COVID-19 pandemic, Nadine Dijkstra's exploration of imagined images took root during an unexpected lull in her usual research activities. With time on her hands due to quarantines and lockdowns, she delved into the scientific literature on imagination, immersing herself in historical accounts of how scholars grappled with this abstract concept. It was during this deep dive that she unearthed a gem from 1910, a study conducted by psychologist Mary Cheeves West Perky. Perky's ingenious experiment involved asking participants to conjure images of fruits while gazing at a blank wall. Unbeknownst to them, she faintly projected images of those fruits onto the wall, barely perceptible. Despite not consciously registering the projected images, participants remarked on the vividness of their imagined fruits. If I hadn't known I was imagining, I would have thought it real, one participant confessed. Perky's groundbreaking conclusion was that when our perception aligns with our awareness of imagining something, we tend to dismiss it as imaginary. This phenomenon became a cornerstone in psychology, famously dubbed the Perky effect. As Bense Nanai, a professor at the University of Antwerp, notes, it's a venerable classic that warrants acknowledgement whenever the topic of imagery arises. Fast forward to the 1970s, when psychology researcher Sidney Jolson Siegel breathed new life into Perky's work. Siegel revamped and expanded the experiment, demonstrating that perception and imagination can indeed intertwine. In one variant, participants were asked to visualize something like the New York City skyline, while faint projections of unrelated objects like tomatoes danced on the wall. The result? A curious blend of imagined and real imagery, such as the New York City skyline bathed in a sunset glow. However, not all attempts to replicate Perky's findings yielded success. Some studies, plagued by repeated trials and participant anticipation, muddied the waters. As Thomas Nasolaris remarks, once participants catch wind of the experiment's aim, 
they're prone to altering their responses to align with expectations. To address this, Dijkstra, under the guidance of Steve Fleming, an authority on metacognition at University College London, devised a contemporary rendition of the experiment, sidestepping such pitfalls. Participants were tested just once, eliminating the opportunity for hindsight editing. Their study meticulously scrutinized the Perky effect, alongside two competing hypotheses concerning how the brain discerns reality from imagination. Evaluation networks. One of the alternative hypotheses posits that the brain employs the same neural networks for both perceiving reality and conjuring imagination, but the resolution of functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI brain scans, might not suffice to discern the nuances in how these networks operate. Lars Mukli's research, for instance, suggests that in the brain's visual cortex, where images are processed, imaginary experiences might be encoded in a more superficial layer compared to real experiences. Mukli vividly illustrates the limitations of functional brain imaging, likening it to squinting our eyes. Within each pixel equivalent of a brain scan, about a thousand neurons reside, obscuring our ability to decipher individual neural activity. In contrast, another hypothesis, proposed by studies led by Joel Pearson at the University of New South Wales, suggests that the same pathways in the brain code for both imagination and perception, with imagination considered a diluted form of perception. Amid the pandemic lockdown, Nadine Dykstra and Steve Fleming conducted an online study recruiting 400 participants. Tasked with envisioning diagonal lines amidst static-filled images, participants rated the vividness of their mental imagery between trials. Unbeknownst to them, in the final trial, the researchers subtly increased the intensity of a faintly projected image of diagonal lines, either conforming to the participants' imagined direction or opposing it. Subsequently, participants were asked to determine whether what they perceived was real or imagined. Dijkstra anticipated uncovering the Perky effect, wherein participants would perceive the projection as a product of their imagination when it aligned with their mental imagery. However, contrary to expectations, participants were more inclined to perceive the image as real. Nevertheless, a faint echo of the Perky effect emerged. Participants who perceived the image as real reported a heightened vividness compared to those who deemed it purely imaginary. In a follow-up experiment omitting the projected image, participants' ratings of vividness correlated with their likelihood to perceive the imagery as real. These results suggest a fascinating interplay between the vividness of mental imagery and its perceived reality, shedding light on the complex mechanisms underlying how the brain navigates the boundary between imagination and reality. Nadine Dijkstra's observations illuminate the intricate interplay between mental imagery and perceived reality, suggesting that when the amalgamated signal becomes sufficiently intense, our brains perceive it as genuine reality. She posits the existence of a threshold above which visual signals are construed as real and below which they are deemed imagined, a notion that hints at a potential continuum of perceptual states. To delve deeper into the brain's mechanisms for discerning reality from imagination, researchers revisited brain scans from a previous study involving participants vividly imagining and perceiving various images. Strikingly, they discovered remarkable similarities in activity patterns within the visual cortex during both scenarios. While vivid imagery closely resembled perception, the distinction between faint perception and imagery remained ambiguous, necessitating further exploration. Crucially, the brain must meticulously regulate the strength of mental imagery to prevent confusion between fantasy and reality, a delicate balancing act underscored by Thomas Nasalaris. He emphasizes the brain's tendency to interpret mental imagery as literally as visual stimuli, highlighting the pivotal role of the frontal cortex in signal modulation. However, the precise determinants of imagery vividness and the distinction between imagery strength and reality threshold remain enigmatic, prompting speculation about neurotransmitters, neuronal connectivity, or alternative mechanisms. These findings offer a tantalizing glimpse into the intricacies of perception and imagination, 
shedding light on the brain's remarkable capacity to navigate the blurred boundaries between internal constructs and external reality. As researchers continue to probe the depths of cognitive neuroscience, the quest to unravel the mysteries of the human mind promises to yield further insights into the nature of perception and the mechanisms underlying our subjective experiences of reality. Lars Muckley suggests a fascinating possibility. An unidentified subset of neurons might establish the reality threshold, dictating whether a signal veers towards imagined imagery or genuine perception. Such a discovery would elegantly reconcile the first and third hypotheses, offering a unified explanation for the brain's processing of reality and imagination. Despite the variance from his own findings, Mukli finds the line of reasoning in the study compelling, deeming it an exciting contribution to the field. However, Peter Tse reminds us that imagination transcends mere visual stimuli, encompassing complex cognitive processes like decision-making and creative innovation. From planning dinner based on cupboard contents to envisioning groundbreaking inventions like the Wright brothers' flying machine, imagination is a multifaceted phenomenon that shapes human experience. The disparities between Perky's findings and Dijkstra's study may stem from procedural differences, but they also hint at a broader possibility that our perception of the world has evolved over time. Dijkstra's study, focusing on the subjective feeling of reality rather than belief in an image's authenticity, suggests that the prevalence of projected images and digital media in the 21st century has influenced how our brains evaluate reality. With projected images and video commonplace today, our brains may have adapted to a lower reality threshold, making it more challenging to distinguish between imagined and genuine perceptions. As Dijkstra points out, even though participants in the experiment weren't anticipating visual stimuli, exposure to modern media may have primed their brains to expect such representations, further blurring the line between reality and imagination. Exploring the Roots of Hallucinations The findings from Dijkstra's study provoke intriguing questions about the broader relevance of the mechanism underlying the distinction between imagination and perception. Dijkstra suggests that scenarios such as drifting off to sleep, where the boundaries between reality and the dream world blur, may involve a dip in the reality threshold. In conditions like schizophrenia, characterized by a breakdown of reality, there could be a calibration issue affecting this threshold. Carolina Lempert, an assistant professor of psychology at Adelphi University, who was not involved in the study, speculates on the mechanisms underlying hallucinations in psychosis. She suggests that hallucinations could arise either due to exceptionally vivid imagery that surpasses the reality threshold or due to a dysregulation of this threshold itself. While some studies indicate heightened sensory activity in individuals who hallucinate, further research is needed to fully elucidate the emergence of hallucinations. Benson Nanai proposes investigating the reality thresholds of individuals with hyperphantasia, an exceptionally vivid imagination that sometimes blurs the line between imagination and reality. Similarly, situations such as drug-induced hallucinations or lucid dreams may present strong imagined experiences that individuals recognize as unreal. In conditions like post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, where individuals may experience intrusive and vivid imagery, the boundary between imagined and real experiences may become distorted, contributing to the overwhelming sense of reality in these experiences. Some of the challenges mentioned may stem from breakdowns in the brain's mechanisms responsible for discerning between real and imagined experiences. Dijkstra suggests exploring the reality thresholds of individuals with aphantasia, a condition characterized by the inability to consciously visualize mental images which could offer insights into these mechanisms. Moreover, the brain's ability to distinguish between real and fake images may parallel its capacity to differentiate between real and imagined experiences. With advancements in simulations that increasingly blur the line between reality and fabrication, the challenge of discerning authenticity in visual stimuli becomes more pressing than ever. Dijkstra and her team are currently adapting their experiment to be conducted within a brain scanner. Their ultimate goal is to manipulate the brain's mechanisms 
to enhance the realism of imagined experiences. This has implications for medical treatments, such as using virtual reality or neural implants to restore vision in blind individuals, where the ability to modulate the perceived reality of experiences could be crucial. The notion that reality is a construct of the brain underscores the subjective nature of human perception. As Lars Muckley eloquently puts it, everything we perceive is a creation of our neurons, implying that each individual's reality is uniquely shaped by their neural processes. Therefore, the distinction between imagination and reality is inherently fluid, reflecting the dynamic and subjective nature of human perception. If you found this exploration of the mind as captivating as we did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Your support enables us to continue unraveling the mysteries of the brain together. Thank you for watching.